Hi, I'm David Goforth with Extension Successful Gardener. Today I'm going to be talking about trees, and as much as I love trees, unfortunately they don't love me back. We need to be careful with trees, they can uh, become dangerous a long time before they become dead, and we may have to remove them from a landscape. But even more often we have things like ice storms that will bring down and we have to use some chainsaws around the trees. We have events like Hugo, hurricane season coming up, and we have to use chainsaws during those times. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about chainsaw safety today and how to take down a tree in our landscape. I've asked Harry to help me here. Harry, you've had a lot of experience with chainsaws and stuff. Yes, I have. And uh, some of it's been good experience and some of it's been bad experience. But today we're going to try to uh, point out some of the things that you do to make it a good experience. We don't want a $200 chainsaw costing a $20,000 hospital bill. And they can do that. Or worse. Or worse. Okay. <laughs> well, let's take a look at the chainsaw first and we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay. Harry, I've been told if this drops across your leg, you can go about 20 steps before you're dead. I don't want to try it. Okay. <laughs> well, tell this me how is, not to. This is, a, this is a typical chainsaw and it has some safety features attached to it. One of the safety features here is an anti-kickback device. This if when it push forward will uh, stop the uh, blade from turning and kickback usually occurs when the when the end of the saw hits a log and comes up like so but uh, uh, one of the other uh, features of this particular chainsaw is that the motor is isolated from the blade and what that does it keeps your hands from receiving the vibration of the motor okay and this is very important because if you get vibration from the motor, it can cause you to get uh, cramps in your arms, and that's the time to quit. Okay, this uh, kickback again is just between there and this point right here. In other words, right it's, here, it's at, at the it's end. Push the chainsaw. It's at the end. One way. This is going to push the chainsaw the other way. Yes. This down here, you can nose into something, but when you go from this point here to right here, that's yes. where the kickback is occurring. Yes. Another, another thing when you're handling a chainsaw, as you mentioned earlier, watch out for your legs. Now, one of the, one of the ways that you can get in trouble is to cut limbs on the ground. And uh, what happens is that if the limb has got a little bit of tension on it, it'll, it'll bind the saw and pull it back into your leg. One of the other things that uh, you, you should know about them is that They've got a centrifugal clutch, and the centrifugal clutch is designed to engage when the saw is running at high RPM. When the uh, saw is running idle and you're walking through the brush with it, the chain should never be running. There are saws that the clutch will break, They'll, the chain will run continuously. If that happens to you, stop and get it repaired. Okay. So that's a safety feature again. And, and, and the other thing is, of course, you've got to keep that idle speed down. If you run your idle speed too high, you can engage the clutch all the time. And that's not good. Okay. Now, when you get ready to go into a log, uh, you, you see people, and again, you've got to hold this, keep your arm here behind the chain break. You can't hold it over here like this, or you've got no safety whatsoever. The, the one issue is never, never, never run a chainsaw with one hand, don't do that. You've got to have two hands on it any time that chain is running. Because the direction of the kickback is is. That's right. Here. That's correct. Okay, and, and most of the time, I mean, I've had it happen to me a few times. You don't know that it's happened. It's just suddenly your thing is engaged. That's right. I don't know why it's engaged, but it was engaged because the kickback, and this is protecting. That's you. right. And if this wasn't working, you'd have it in your face again before you really do not know that it happens. And engage this here. Okay, so those are some of the uh, very, very basic things about a chainsaw. And, of course, as you mentioned earlier, this chain is very, very aggressive and it'll cut you quickly. Okay. Now, the other thing that uh, some people, I've seen people do, and let me ask you what you think on this, Harry, is they will, they'll go in here and they'll start cutting, they'll cut real easy, they won't pull the trigger all the way down. Uh, I'm more of the opinion that the trigger ought to be, in, you know, if you're going cutting, your trigger will be fully engaged, and then when you come out, you need to do your trigger. It's very seldom that I have a need just to put the trigger in part way or run the chain sort of Run it like wide that. open. It's always either wide open or right. it's idle. Or it's stopped. The blades are stopped. Glasses are a must. The uh, saw will toss uh, sawdust back in your face, 
and you can really cause some problems with your eyes. The other problem that you can avoid very easily is, is hearing loss. These saws will run at a decibel level, probably 110, so uh, always wear earplugs. Another thing that you can do if you're, if you're working in an uh, area where there's woods or uh, trees over the top of your head is to wear a helmet. Now, this helmet will not uh, uh, save you from what I call a widow maker. And this is a limb uh, which we'll show you in a few minutes, which was in this particular tree that would uh, fall on your head and uh, the helmet will not save you from that. But it will save you from small limbs. What it, what it does, and I, I didn't understand this for a long time, Harry, is the helmet is not designed to just sit there and take a blow. Right. The helmet is designed to move you. Yes. You know, the tree is going to come down. The tree's going to come down the same place it always comes down. But when it hits this, your head's going to move. And instead of crushing vertebrae, it's crushing shoulders of a year. Yes. And that's what the, uh, a helmet like this, and these things are, you're talking just $10 or so in the store for a helmet like this. Uh, you can get more fancy if you want to, but uh, again, it's not to stop a huge limb, but if it moves you this way and breaks the shoulder instead of a back uh, vertebrae, then it's done its job. And the same way with this bill out here, uh, the bill, and you'll see people turn these things around backwards, but uh, if you want to keep your nose, what you need yeah. to do is have this here. And again, it don't stop anything, but it moves it and moves your nose out of the way of the fall. And that's what the, the hat does for you. Right. Uh, a pair of leather gloves protects your hands from wood splinters and also protects your hands from cable burns. So always wear leather, leather gloves. When trees hit the ground, they don't stay where you think they're going to stay sometimes because there's lots and lots of energy and it can be stored in the limbs. And these limbs can cause a tree to go to the left, to the right, or can cause a tree to kick back. And one of the things you want to do when you feel that tree going is, is use your escape route, your pre-planned escape route. And your pre-planned escape route normally should be back 15 feet. So if you have planned it correctly, you will not see the tree hit the ground. Once that tree gets over there at a, uh, beyond the center of gravity, there's nothing you can do with it. You can't control it, so don't even look. Just escape yourself. Get out of the way. And I sort of like the, the idea of 45 degrees is a good way to run back this way from the tree because the trees, go, it can go this way, it can go back this way, and so if I'm going this way, I get away from it the fastest. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, correct way to get a tree down now. Uh, the correct way to cut a tree. Notch the tree. Now, always cut above the notched area. So this is cut above uh, an, an inch and a half to two inches. Now, uh, this tree had uh, two come-alongs on it, so uh, the hinge is rather wide, and uh, the wide hinge gives you more control over where the tree is going to fall. Now, Harry, on this, this uh, wedge that you've cut out of here, what I notice a lot of times, particularly people that are in forestry, they will cut a wedge here that's only like an inch or two wide. This angle will be fairly sharp in here because they're out in the woods and they don't really care where the tree falls. But here we've got more interest in where the tree falls, so our wedge come in here at a, a fairly steep angle on this. My, my goal is to put a tree within uh, a foot and a half of where I want it to go. Okay, if I, to do that, you're going to have to have an angle that comes in here closer and, to 70 yes, degrees and you, so. and you need a And you need a, uh, uh, a tension on the tree so that uh, it, it breaks off a wide hinge. Okay, and your wedge here, uh, we can't see it now, but you can't have any overbite on your wedge, or that just takes out, I mean, your wedge don't work if there's overbite on That's it. That's correct. That's correct. Now, okay. this, this tree will be at a uh, probably a, a 35, 40 degree angle before that, wedge, uh, before that hinge breaks. Okay. Now, here, Harry, is the reason I think you're kicking this tree down that we just looked at is because of how dangerous it got to be up here near the top. You can see very uh, weak attachment right here on this part right there. An ice storm could bring that out very easily. Or a windstorm. Or a windstorm. Or when you start rattling it, when you're shaking it, cutting it, then it can come down. Yes, it can. That's why they call it a what? A widow maker. Widow maker, yeah. Yes. And now, uh, don't uh, expect every widow maker to be the same. 
Some widow makers will actually lodge in adjacent trees and stay up in an adjacent tree. So before you walk over to a down tree, look up. Those are the ones waiting on you to turn you back. That's right. That's what makes uh, logging so dangerous and uh, cutting trees so dangerous is the weight of what can come down on your head. That's correct. Okay, let's take a look at uh, how you want to move some trees. Some trees don't naturally want to fall exactly where you want them to move. So let's look at uh, how to fall a tree exactly where you want it. We have a ladder leaning up against the tree here. The ladder is tied off and uh, we climbed up that ladder and put a, uh, a, a rope, uh, in, in this case it happens to be a seat belt, around this tree. And notice that it's, it's about uh, 10, 12 feet from the, from the ground. And uh, on to the other end of the seat belt, we have a come along. And by uh, cranking that come along, we can put easily a, a 500 to 1,000 pounds of load on the tree. And what this does, it, uh, it allows the uh, uh, tree to fall in the direction in which you are, uh, want it to fall. And it allows you to keep the hinge wide, a wide hinge on falling a tree means that you have better control. Now, well, Harry, you've given us a lot of good examples here, a lot of good uh, tips about cutting trees and being safe when you're taking down trees and when we're cutting up trees like hurricanes and ice storms and things like that. And I want to thank you for uh, helping us today and just wonder uh, how does a person go about getting experience on this stuff? <laughs> I started in the woods when I was eight years old and worked in a, in a, in a farm woodlot uh, until I was 22. Well, I would certainly say anybody that wasn't able to do that should uh, certainly stop any time they feel uncomfortable with what they're going to do. If they don't feel comfortable with it, wait and, uh, or get some advice or get some help before they continue on themselves. And remember that $200 chainsaw can become a $20,000 item. That's a good one to end on there, Harry. <laughs> well, until next time, plan and plant for a better world.